If you picked up Mount Everest and dumped it in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, the peak would still be 2.1 kilometres below the surface. So far down is the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean and the deepest location on Earth, that humans haven't really managed to poke around down there. Just four manned descents and three unmanned robotic expeditions have been successful. The furthest hit the 11 kilometre mark. It's pitch black, freezing cold, and the intense pressure would crush most submarine crafts that exist. As a result, we've explored very little of the Mariana Trench, and each trip down has led to extraordinary discoveries. Previously unknown sea life, from large and strange creatures to tiny shrimp-like animals, as well as brightly coloured rocky outcrops and mysterious mud-dwelling organisms. And on the past couple of trips, as far as we've ever gone before, plastic, a whole lot of plastic. Plastic is super cheap. It's one of the cheapest materials we have, and we use it in just about everything we make, from packaging and storage to toys and car parts. But it has a huge cost. The environmental group, the World Wildlife Fund, just released groundbreaking research produced in conjunction with the consultancy firm Dahlberg. It estimated the annual cost of plastics to society and the environment, $5 trillion. That's the modelled lifetime cost of all the plastic produced globally in just a single year. It accounts for the pollution from manufacturing, waste management, environmental degradation, ecosystem destruction, and so on. To put $5 trillion into perspective, that's the annual GDP of India. It's four times the amount of money spent on the war in Afghanistan over two decades. Of this mammoth bill, Australia is lumped with about $17 billion. Every single albatross that you see across this landscape has been fed plastic. So as you open it up, you can see that's incredible. all that plastic that's inside this bird. Plastics don't break down. Because they're cheap, a lot of plastic is produced and it ends up sitting in landfill or flowing into rivers, creeks and the sea. It's eaten by animals or chokes them to death and microplastics get into our drinking water. We think of it as pure, but according to the World Health Organization, the water we drink comes with an added extra, tiny, often microscopic fragments of plastic, and no one knows whether our health is at risk. Here we can just about see some very small specks, and we suspect that those are the microplastics. We've made big strides in reducing our plastic use. You've probably switched from plastic straws to biodegradable or reusable ones. We're encouraged to dump plastic bags at Woolies or Coles for more environmentally friendly options. A lot of jurisdictions are banning single-use plastics altogether. And across the board, participation in recycling programs is growing rapidly. And yet, the production of plastic is also growing. Virgin plastics devised from fossil fuels are driving this huge surge. The WWF fears that without action, plastic production will double by 2040, which will also see plastic pollution double. To see how insidious this plastic use is, you just have to look at where it ends up. There's the trash vortex, comprising two separate but enormous floating garbage patches. One spans the west coast of North America to Japan, another between Hawaii and California. Together, they're known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, three times the size of France. 1.8 billion pieces of plastic debris just floating out there in the middle of the ocean. Across the whole world, scientists estimate that 5.25 trillion pieces of macro and microplastics pollute the ocean, weighing up to 269,000 tonnes. Each day, another 8 million pieces of plastic make their way into the sea and some of it has floated all the way down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Look at this vision. It was taken by a submarine craft that ventured more than 10 kilometres down. That's the remnants of a helium balloon decorated with a character from the kids' movie Frozen. Next to it, a 20-litre bucket. All around, shreds of plastic bags, containers and packets. Humans ourselves have barely begun to explore these vast depths of the ocean but all of our crap has made it there. Australia recently committed to a binding global agreement to combat marine plastic pollution. 
Environment Minister Susan Lay announced the endorsement of a proposed agreement that aims to reduce waste, prevent future plastic pollution and address its enormous impact. It's called the Pacific Declaration. Support for this global treaty on plastic pollution is growing. More than 110 countries are on board. All that remains is to get to work. He is hoping we can start to make things better before they get much, much worse.